Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. Um, Happy New Year to start and uh, thanks for joining us again. Um, this year we're going to start off with a request made by someone on one of our older videos, one from right from the beginning, um, a grasshopper video Akio made with a cull pattern. You might recognize this one. Um, it's a, a pair of earrings and a ring and a fairly simple grasshopper definition to boots. Um, and the question that one of our viewers had was, could we convert this into a rhino tutorial? So um, here we go. Today we're going to show you how to do this in rhino and to show you the difference between and the advantages of doing it with the one versus doing it with the other. So let's kick it off in Rhino. I'm doing this in Rhino 7 for the moment. Um, so I hope you can all follow. I've got a couple of layers set up here in the meantime. What we've got is uh, two, main, two main layers, earrings and ring, and I'm going to work with a main curve, set of main curves, set of secondary curves, and then we're just going to pipe it. So as you can see, it's it's going to be a fairly simple construction in Rhino 2. Uh, pretty much you could call this a um, starters to intermediate tutorial. So let's start with the ring. I'm going to use my main curve layer and we're going to create a circle curve in my front viewport. I'm going to use a circumference of 56 ring finger and from the side here, I'm just going to have a look, I'm going to take that ring curve and I'm going to offset that curve by 2 and I'm going to leave that offset curve in the center and I'm going to move the main ring curve um, with, the, 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 with the ring size of 56 out to the side. I'm just going to use my gumball here and my right viewport and move it minus 5 in the one direction. I think we minus 5 should be good. Okay. Um, okay, well, we've got a run of history here, so we're going to have to move the other one back again five points. Yes, I'm going to break the history. Um, it's important for this uh, tutorial to, to usually keep your record history on. Um, with Grasshopper, you, you're already working with a parametric program, but in Rhino, if you want to have some sort of access to parametrics or parametry, you uh, can fall back on the record history. It's, um, it can be very helpful sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to mirror that curve over to the other side. Okay. And I'm going to take the original curve and we are going to rotate it. And I've already got you a degree of 10. Um, I think 12 might be even better. So I'm going to do, just rotate that by a degree of 12. And have a look at it in our perspective view. See if that's okay yep that should be all right and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use my loft command under my surfaces and i'm going to loft this set of curves um you can see here on the last curve it's just veered down to the one side we just go uh make sure that quad is on in our uh, o snaps and we're just going to snap that onto the perpendicular side, switch quite off again, and press enter. And now we have our surfaces. Now, why am I lofting the surface? Well, the reason I'm lofting it is because by lofting it, or you could use a sweep, even a network if you want, I have the ability to choose the amount of ISO curves I want on the surface. So why is that going to be necessary? Well, the reason that's going to be necessary is because if I want to create um, 
arc curves from one curve to the other, uh, to the other side, uh, at even spaces from one another, it's not going to be possible in, in a polar array because our curve is rotated and therefore there is no regular way to polar array one arc curve all the way around the ring center so what i'm doing is i'm creating a lofted surface with a um with a certain amount of curves uh, i've got your 44 control point uh, control point curves um i can change that i can make that 28 for example uh, let's have a look what well, looks like 28 is less but if I want more options of curves that I can delete and, 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 and take out, I make it a higher number and that way it will look closer to what um, we did in the first cull pattern, in first cull pattern tutorial. Here, in fact, we actually do have 44 curves originally created interpolate curves created between all three main curves so going back I've created the surface and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my curves from surfaces and I'm going to take extract wireframe and what I have with extract wireframe so let's just delete that surface what I have with extract wireframe is I have First of all, I'll have duplicates on the main curves because it recreated those uh, edges. But what I also have is I have the um, the curves that were created on the surface, the ISO curves that were created on the surface. And I'm going to use those ISO curves to pipe my, my ring. So let's just change those to our secondary curve layer just so it's easier for us to select them so let's first let's select our main curves let's head on over to pipe pipe flat and I'm using a pipe radius of 0 0.7 again this is to do what we had on the grasshopper tutorial we had a radius of 0 0.7 on our main curve and we had a radius of 0 0.6 on our secondary curves so this is 0 0.7 and pop that into our pipes layer and with the secondary curves we are going to do the same thing pipe but 0 0.6 is our diameter and there we go okay so that's not very regular so the first thing we see is that with rhino you can't just Cull or whatever you like and 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 rearrange it. Um, Rhino history has limits and this doesn't fit within those limits. So what we're going to do here is, is we would effectively have to go delete um, curves. So let's go choose every second curve here. We can choose the pattern we want and we can delete whichever we don't want. Um, you can also store them in a different layer so that you could always open it and change it if you wanted to for example uh, but here we have the ring with a lot less choices on what we want to do with that ring so if you wanted to go back and change the size of any one of these pipes you you would have to do it from from the start and uh, if you wanted to change the positioning of any of these curves, you'd have to go back and re-loft the surface. So that's, that's the ring. Let's have a look at the earring. So I'm just going to switch my ring layer off. And we go back to the grasshopper tutorial. And let's have a quick look at that earring. So in the earring, we have the same thing. We have three curves. Um, this is quite simple to, to, to recreate. Uh, we would go to our circle tool again. I'm going to do this from my top layer and I'm going to make the first circle diameter, um, 35. There we go. And what I'm going to do before I do anything else, is I'm going to rebuild this curve. 
I'm going to rebuild this curve with, let's have a look at our grasshopper tutorial. We have here the outside curve. Now, for this tutorial, we divided the curves as we did for the ring as well. And the number we divided by four was 44. So we would go into our original uh, into our original curve, change the point count to 44, and the degree is 3, of course, and just tick yes. And I'm going to offset that curve. Actually, no, we're not going to offset that curve. We're not going to offset that curve. What we're going to do is we are going to scale and copy that curve down. So I'm going to use the gumball. I'm going to press Alt and I'm going to press Shift so that I scale it proportionally while I'm copying it down. And I'm just going to stop it at around about 20 millimeters in diameter. And if I click on that curve, you're going to see it has the same number of segments as the bigger curve. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go and select every second point um, of that curve and now we are going to use shift click on our gumball to change the position of those points and you'll see the center curve changes too okay and then we're going to create one more curve in the very center that one I'm going to make 10 millimeters in diameter and I'm going to take this center curve and I'm going to lift it by five millimeters in fact, that might just be too much. Let's just lift it by, let's say, three. That's better. Okay. Um, now, how do we create the arc curves on this? Well, loft is one option. So for the loft, we just click on the consequential curves. We need to position our our start point and what i have here is a fairly nice arrangement but what you can see when you look in the top viewports is that our iso curves are not regular they are not uh evenly spaced from one another um so instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an arc using interpolated interpolated curve and I'm going to create an arc between our three curves and I'm going to sweep two rails the sweep two rail with the interpolated curve as my profile curve and here I see I have a lot more iso curves and, but they're more regularly spaced from one another, much more evenly. In fact, um, what we could do, I'm just going to change our Isaac curve arrangement. What we could do is add a slash. So what does add slash do? Add slash allows you to build a guide curve in to 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 designate the direction in which your iso curves should be flowing so uh, this is very useful when you create kind of irregular uh you when one curve uh one rail curve and another rail curve are not the same length for example but you need a regular uh, surface build up between them there we go so we could put in a couple more but as we can see our, our curves are, are fairly regularly spaced from one another they are they are even evenly spaced apart um, I have a lot of curves there so I'm just going to at this point click OK and I'm going to build the surface and I'm going to extract the wireframe on the surface again delete the surface 
and the curves we don't need so here we can go again delete curves that we don't need let's create regular spaces between okay so not to bore you i just um skip the part where i show you how i delete as you all know how to do that and uh, let's have a look at where we are at now so what we have here is something a lot more regular that's great but now we could go ahead and start deleting even more so uh, let's first create the um well let's first save all these curves over into our secondary curve layer okay now at this point you could actually make that a uh, duplicate that and make that a main a main curve layer so that you have all your originals and here we will keep the 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 cold ones for whatever pattern so let's go ahead and do a little bit more deleting so here we go now we've got a nice arrangement of curves and all we're going to do is have a look at the dimensions used here so we have a radius of 0 0.8 millimeters on our main curves 0 0.6 on our secondary curves so let's go and select main curves and pipe that with 0 0.8 okay and with the secondary curves we use the pipe for 0 0.6 and we can just select all poly surfaces and put them into the pipes layer change object layer and just rotate that by 90 degrees let's put back our ring and uh, there you go so this is how you would go about doing this in Rhino. As you can see, it's clunky, to say the least. It's not editable. Uh, you might have the same result, but you by no means have the same kind of control and uh, iteration options that you do with Grasshopper. It's a simple enough object to build, so it won't take much time to rebuild, but there are clear advantages to doing this over grasshopper so just for example um let's take the earrings and let's just go back and change the number of curves around the radius for example and uh we could just change our true false true false true statements to have a different cull pattern for example uh, we could make it false to have a lot less okay and the same thing goes for the radius and we could up the radius or down the radius on our pipes make it more filigree or make it more chunky and i'm doing this in a matter of seconds and all i need to do is bake it out let's just bake that out into our ring ring so um i hope that that that's a nice demonstration of the differences between rhino and grasshopper when when you're going to build something 
to assess whether it would be to your advantage to try and build it in Grasshopper versus building it in Rhino. Um, but uh, as you can see, uh, you could pretty much build anything you wanted to in Rhino that you can build in Grasshopper as well. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that uh, you learned something. And uh, we would love it if you would click like and subscribe to our to our channel. Uh, this coming week, we're going to be putting up another video by request of one of our viewers, uh, a signet ring with an emerald cut stone with a halo of diamonds. Uh, so look out for that one. And uh, we hope to be seeing you. Have a wonderful day. Cheers.